Okay, great. Thank you, Paolo. Um, and welcome, everyone. We're really pleased to be here this afternoon. Um, let's start by introducing ourselves. So my name is Jennifer McDonald, and I'm the head teacher of the English language programs here at Dalhousie University. And I'm Jasmine Smart. I work with the Faculty of Graduate Studies doing recruitment, retention, and admissions. So I'll be talking to you a lot about admissions today, about our programs, and also at just you know, how, what, how you go about doing the admissions process. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. First, I'm going to tell you a bit about Halifax, about Dalhousie University, and very quickly tell you about undergraduate programs, so bachelor's programs. Then Jasmine will talk all about uh, master's and doctoral programs and the admissions process, uh, funding, and everything related to uh, graduate level studies. And then I'll finish off by um, telling you a bit about language programs, uh, short-term language studies here at Dalhousie and in Canada. And as Halo said, after that, we'll be able to take your questions. But if a question occurs to you during the presentation, just leave it in the chat and we'll get to it after. All right. Okay. So um, first, let's talk about uh, Halifax. Um, Dalhousie University is located in the city of Halifax, uh, which is in the province of Nova Scotia. So you can see here on this map, um, Nova Scotia is uh, on the Atlantic coast of Canada. Halifax is one of Canada's, in Canadian terms, it is a um, medium-sized city. Um, and uh, but some of you may not have heard of this uh, this city before, so I wanted to show you on the map. Um, it's about two hours north of New York, or two hours uh, east of Toronto, um, and you can connect very quickly to most uh, major Latin American capital cities uh, through Toronto to get to Halifax. Um, now, let me describe Halifax for you a little bit. Um, so it's, as I was saying, it's the largest city in the Atlantic region of Canada. So in, in, in the, the Atlantic provinces on Canada's east coast. There are about 400,000 people in, in the city of Halifax. But of that population, there are a lot of students. Halifax is a really big student city because there are, um, uh, approximately six higher education institutions in the city of Halifax. Um, so what that gives the city is a lot of life, a lot of vibrancy, um, a lot of culture, things to do. Um, it's really easy to uh, connect, make friends, find apartments, places to live uh, in a city with so many students. Um, as you can see from the photo, uh, Halifax is right on the Atlantic coast. It's right on the ocean, um, and it's a very green city. Uh, there's a, a big park in the center of the city. There's a lot of trees, um, and it's a very uh, clean, green city. And especially uh, if you're someone who loves uh, nature, if you love beaches, uh, parks, the outdoors, it's a really great city because you can be in the, at the university and in maybe 10 minutes, you can be swimming in a beautiful lake. Um, so you can have the combination of um, the services of a city with, um, with a lot of nature and natural beauty very close by. Um, Halifax and, and Nova Scotia are known for their uh, music. Um, Nova Scotia has, has a very strong music culture, so there's a lot of um, uh, culture, nightlife uh, in the city of Halifax. Um, I always say that Halifax is it's a city, but with the heart of a small town. And what I mean by that is um, it has all the services of a city, but with the warmth, friendliness, and safety of a small town. Um, and it's really easy to make connections, to, to make friends, uh, to get to know people around the, the university and in the city. Um, the Atlantic provinces of Canada are known as 
um, the friendliest part of the country. Um, now, I don't know, maybe you can tell us in the chat box if you've been to Nova Scotia before, if you've been to Halifax, um, but uh, that's the stereotype. I can't say if it's true or not. You have to tell me. But the the um, we're we're famous in this part of, of the country for being very friendly. Um, and my final point here about Halifax is, you see, I say how to cross the street in Halifax. What do I mean by this? Um, so I work with a lot of students here in the English language programs at Dalhousie students that come from all around the world and sometimes from very, very big cities. And some people um, laugh when they first arrive in Halifax when they, when they go to cross the street. Um, because when you cross the street in Halifax, you just stand on the side of the road and kind of stand there for two seconds and the cars will stop for you. If they think that you're trying to cross the street, all the cars will come screeching to a halt and let you cross the street. Um, and some students laugh and they contrast that with their own cities where crossing the street can be a very scary or dangerous ordeal. So that's a little bit of um, the life uh, and the lifestyle in Halifax. Let's talk about Dalhousie University now. Um, so as you can see um, in this photo of Dalhousie, um, you can see the ocean in the background. Um, and Dalhousie is located right beside the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and you can be standing in the center of the campus and in about five minutes you can walk and dip your feet into the Atlantic. And this location right beside the ocean and with close proximity to um, uh, the natural, uh, natural world and natural landscapes really informs and inspires um, us here at the university in terms of um, the types of programs and the research strengths of Dalhousie. So um, Dalhousie is one of the top 300 universities in the world and especially in the areas of marine and earth sciences. It's one in the top 100. So um, Jasmine will tell us more later about some of the research that's happening um, more specifically at the university. But anything related to um, marine science, oceans, ocean research, oceanography, um, marine technologies, um, natural resources, natural resource management, uh, environment, sustainability, um, anything related to um, these types of areas is a big strength of Dalhousie. Um, Dalhousie is, um, this year we celebrate our 200th anniversary, so it was founded in 1818, which makes it one of Canada's uh, oldest universities. Um, it's a medium-sized university in Canada with around 18,000 students. Um, and it's one of the country's most international universities. Um, and we have um, close to, I think now, uh, it, close to 20% international students. Um, Dalhousie receives a lot of research funding. It's one of Canada's top um, research universities in a variety of different areas. And as you can see, we have 12 faculties um, with more than 180 programs. Um, Dalhousie has several different campuses. We have an, um, uh, the, the main campuses are located right in the center of the city of Halifax. Um, but we also have an agricultural campus that's about one hour outside the city um, with a lot of facilities related uh, to agriculture. Um, so you can see here, um, uh, we have a, a, a faculty of architecture and planning, agriculture, arts and social science, computer science, uh, continuing education, dentistry, engineering, health. Now that's an, a, a faculty that includes different health professions um, such as uh, pharmacy, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, um, nursing, etc. Uh, we have the faculty of law, management, medicine, and science. 
Let's talk quickly about undergraduate degrees, so bachelor's degrees. Um, in Canada, most bachelor degree programs um, are four years in length, and Dalhousie has um, more than 180 degree programs. In those, um, uh, 12 of those faculties that I showed you on the previous slide. Um, there are a lot of programs, so I'm not going to tell you all about them here, um, but we were happy to pass on the information where you can read a list of programs. But one really interesting thing about a lot of the bachelor's degree programs at Dell is that they offer what we call the co-op option. What this is, this is a, a modality uh, to do your bachelor's degree where you combine studies, so your studies, as well as work. Um, and you alternate uh, semester of studies with semester of work. Um, and in, um, in some cases, uh, accumulating up to three work terms. Um, it's a really great opportunity because not only do you earn some money, but you get to acquire work experience. Um, you get to make contacts in your field. You get to um, explore the real life working in your field um, as well. So it's a really great opportunity um, uh, that you should consider if you consider doing undergraduate uh, degree studies um, at Dalhousie. Another really interesting aspect for undergraduate degrees is of the um, uh, the possibility to combine major and minors. So you can combine different areas of study all together um, to make a degree that really reflects your interests. All right, well, let's move on now to graduate degrees, master's and doctoral programs, and Jasmine is going to tell you all about postgraduate studies. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. So we have more than 95 master's degree degrees and more than 45 PhDs. We are a comprehensive university, so I'm not going to go through every single one as there's just, you know, I don't think you want to sit here for the next hour listening to me list degrees. I know I wouldn't want to listen to that. Um, but the program you're looking for, it's very likely we do have. So what I'd recommend you do is have a look at the full list of programs. There are two places where they're all listed. One is just on our website. Um, that's the second link that you see, and the other one is the first link, which takes you to the grad information sheets. Each of those is laid out in the same way. You will have to fill out a little form. Um, it just We're asking for your email address, your name, and when you want to start, and then click on as many program sheets as you're interested in. They're all laid out the same way, so you can compare them. So this is um, that second link, the program sheets. And this is what you'll see. So they're organized by faculty. So obviously, if you're interested in agriculture, choose agriculture. But if you're interested in something like computer science, you'll see that under computer science, we have computer science. But we also have computational biology and informatics. We have electronics commerce, sorry, electronic commerce and health informatics. So if you are interested in programs, have a look. That's how they're organized. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box. Now, as Jennifer mentioned, there are some particular research strength areas. Um, oceans, of course, as we are Canada's Ocean University, is one that comes to mind. Or Home to Cove, which is an interdisciplinary government industry, nonprofit, and academic endeavor. It's new, it's exciting. Dalhousie has the world's largest saltwater tanks. We are also a part of the World, uh, world Ocean Tracking Network and OSERA. So there's actually a number of different programs involved with oceans. There's marine biology, oceanography, earth sciences has a very significant um, research group looking at earth sciences in the ocean. And one of the programs that you might not have seen before is the Master of Marine Affairs. So that's actually the business of OCEANS program. And it's a really interesting and quite unique thing that is a management program. It's course-based, but it's specific to ocean studies. 
And of course, we also have a full engineering um, faculty. Some of the particularly interesting areas do include renew renewable resources and energy. Um, again, for oceans, tidal power has lots of really interesting research at the moment, but we also have a research cluster in batteries that's led, led by Jeff Don, who's one of the Tesla battery inventors. So that's pretty exciting, as well as the more traditional solar and wind energy. One particularly interesting program there that might not be the classic one that you're thinking of, your environmental engineering. Um, and of course, we have the full sciences, so chemical engineering, as well as some of the physical sciences. But we have the Masters of Resource and Environmental Management. And that, just as it says, is a management program for resources and energy. Lots of interesting work on sustainable energy there. So, as I mentioned, there's just too many programs for me to keep um, naming them. If you have any questions, if there's any programs of particular interest to you, please do write in the chat box or we'll be getting in touch with you later with a list to all of the programs. Because we do have 95 master's programs, very good chance that what you're looking for we have. And if we don't, there's also the interdisciplinary PhD in health. So if you're coming from medicine or one of the health professions, um, the interdisciplinary PhD in health allows you to either focus on a research topic between health and medicine, two different areas in health, two different areas or medicine, or you can even go further abroad and take an area in health or medicine and another discipline. And if you're not coming from health or medicine, we have the interdisciplinary PhD, which lets you combine any two disciplines or more disciplines. It gets complicated if you're trying to combine more than two. Um, yeah, thanks. So probably one of the first questions is just what's the process? So what you'll do is you'll apply online. I'll go into more detail about all the ones on your side of things. Send in all of your supporting documents. Pay your supervisor fee. Get in touch with a potential supervisor if you're in a thesis-based program. And then once you've done your part of things, your application will be processed by the registrar's office. They'll send it up to the department you applied to. So if you applied to mechanical engineering, you'll send all of your documents to engineering. They'll compile all of your supporting documents, look at your application. And then for most programs, um, they'll either have a set of deadlines throughout the year rolling admissions or for a few programs they'll just have one um, start date so they'll look at all of the programs at once for those you're mostly looking at the very competitive health professions more commonly you'll see rolling admissions where they make decisions as they come up or else you'll see that they make decisions once a month once every two weeks or once every two months so if you have questions about when the decisions are made the department will be able to tell you most commonly, decisions will be made by an admissions committee that's normally made up of faculty within the department and potentially some administrators or the program director. If you're looking at something like business, it's more likely to be made by the program director and some faculty. So once the department's decided which files they want to go forward, they send them up to me at graduate studies. I make sure that your application meets all of the university regulations so that your GPA is what we're looking for. We have all of your official original transcripts sealed by the university that granted you the transcript, all the supporting documents we require. And if everything is good there, we admit you and we'll email you an admission letter the Tuesday or Thursday following. Um, so you've already admitted applied online, filled out the big long form, hopefully had like a nice big cup of coffee or tea to get you through it. So now you're sending in all of your supporting documents. Obviously the one that everyone needs is your transcripts. We don't need any of your high school. All we need is your post-secondary institutions. So any college, university, or similar that you've ever attended, whether or not you got a degree, 
we need your transcript and we need it to be official. So make sure your name is identical in the university transcripts to the name that you're applying under and that also it please be your legal name. Um, make sure that you get the transcripts from the university. So they need to be an official copy issued by the university you graduated from. Um, the university then needs to put them in university envelope, seal them. What we'd like for them to do is send them directly to the department you're applying to. If they can't do that, then make sure the university seals all of the edges of the envelope and do not open it. If the university is issuing it in a language other than English, get a second copy. That one can be unofficial. Take it to any certified translator. We don't have a required list. Anyone who's a certified translator can make your translation. Um, and then send that as well to the department you're applying to. So for your reference letters, we require two of them, two academic reference letters. So that's professors, really it's mostly going to be your university professors. Um, your supervisor is great, course professors, professors that you've done research for. And you can either use the e-reference system at the time that you apply, make sure you have their institutional email address. Um, so that would be not Gmail, Hotmail, something like that. If you want it to be for Dalhousie, it'd be like at Dalhousie. So professor's name at university name is the general way it works. If they don't have an institutional email address or would rather do it on paper, they can do that. They just have to write a letter, um, seal it, sign across the seal, and send it to the department you're applying to. For some departments, you'll need GRE. That's not terribly common. So have a look. Actually, everyone, once you've decided which program you're looking for, check to see which supporting documents they need. If it doesn't list the GRE, you don't need it. Don't take an extra test. Now, it is very likely that you'll need ESL. Jennifer will be talking to you in more detail about this, so I'm not going to get into it other than to say, if your university was taught in English, and the country has English as one of the national languages, you don't need ESL. For everyone else, you need ESL. Um, most professional programs will want your CV or resume. It never hurts to send it anyways. Some thesis-based programs will want a writing sample. Most research programs will want a statement of research intent and also for you to get in touch with your potential supervisor. Um, to get in touch with your potential supervisor, have a look at the Dalhousie website. It lists every supervisor, the research they're doing. So again, make yourself a nice big cup of tea, read through faculty profiles, and when you find someone whose research is really exciting, all you got to do is send them an email. Keep it quick. Faculty get lots of emails. Just be direct. Say, I'm reaching out to find out if you'd be willing to supervise me. Tell them a couple things about your research. Maybe a couple things about yourself, keep it to one paragraph, and you're done. So to receive your decision, please make sure you give us your email address, that your email address is correct and you're checking it regularly, because that's how we'll get in touch with you. Once a decision is being made, we'll email you your admission letter. It's the email address you gave us. So please, when you're filling out the application form, just triple check that it's really your email address, everything's correct, because that's how we'll let you know that you're in. All right, I'm sure you have lots of questions about scholarships. Good news and bad news. Good news is Dell has lots of scholarships. Bad news is eligibility really depends on you, your discipline, and your research topics. So I'm not going to be able to make any broad blanket statements other than please go to our website. It lists a huge number of scholarships we administer internally and also has a database of external scholarships. In particular, have a look at a couple scholarships you might not be familiar with, which are the Nova Scotia Graduate Scholarship. Um, within Nova Scotia, we are the biggest research institution, so we receive the bulk of these scholarships. Um, and you won't be familiar with them if you haven't applied within Nova Scotia, but we have lots of them. So have a look at the Nova Scotia Graduate Scholarship. And Dalhousie is one of only five Killam Scholarship institutions. It's a large, prestigious scholarship. The great thing about a Killam is it is a full ride. It pays for your entire studies. 
and we are the only institution that offers Killam's master scholarships. But because it's prestigious and valuable, they're extremely competitive. So make sure you have a backup plan. I'm sure you are wonderful and competitive, but so is everyone who applies for and gets a Killam. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, so I've noticed there's been a few um, questions in the chat box about language and about English. Um, so I'm going to quickly tell you about um, the English language requirement. So um, the first thing to know is that um, the university um, offers uh, a couple of different ways to satisfy the language proficiency requirements for admission. Of course, you can submit um, a test score. So for most of the graduate programs, that would be a TOEFL of a TOEFL IBT of 92, an IELTS of 7.0 overall, um, or the diploma from Dalhousie's uh, English for Academic Purposes program. So if you do um, the English academic English diploma with us at the university, you don't have to do the IELTS or TOEFL exam. Now keep in mind some of the masters and PhD programs require um, a higher IELTS or TOEFL score. There are some, um, some programs that have a higher requirement. Um, but uh, all of, for all of these programs, you can satisfy um, that requirement by doing a course with us. So, um, and the English for Academic Purposes program is a really good way to prepare for your English studies because it's not just language that we learn in class, but we also study um, research skills, techniques, um, and the academic expectations of studying in Canada. You don't have to be coming to do a master's or PhD or bachelor's at Dalhousie to study this uh, academic English program either. You could come for two, three, six, or nine months and just study English and in a very intensive way and then return home. We also offer, for those that would like to come and study English just for one month, for example, uh, in the summer, so in our summer here in, uh, in Canada, um, which would be in, from May to August, we offer a one month program. So you can come and combine study of English language with the study of um, a different academic area. So you can see here in this photo, these are um, people doing the marine biology course. So they're doing a marine biology course in English at the university and also studying English language. They live together, they um, live at the university in the residence. Um, on weekends, they travel around um, Atlantic Canada and they also study English and different areas. We also have engineering and the environment, sustainability, web development, and some other areas. Um, there are a lot of benefits to studying English um, at the university. Um, and what it basically comes down to is you have access to all of the university services and facilities, from libraries to the gym and to the medical clinic, which is a big advantage and I, um, in terms of um, the support around you as you study English. Okay. So here you have um, my email and Jasmine's email, as well as some websites where you can um, get some information uh, uh, about our particular programs. I thought we, I've, I've been taking note here of your, um, uh, your questions that you have for us. Um, so let's talk about, um, I think, let's see. Um, there was a question about from uh, Juan Carlos uh, Curi Martinez. You asked about your English um, uh, requirement, and I think we've answered that. Um, uh, Victor Enrique Suarez, I think we've answered your question about um, scholarships for graduate students. Um, there's a question here about uh, postdocs. Um, so from Rodrigo Farias. Um, so. Jasmine, would you like to answer that quick? Sure. So at Dalhousie, for the most part, postdoctoral fellowships are administered through human resources. So you can have a look at the website or at Career Beacon and all of the postdoctoral fellowships that professors have funding for will be posted there. The only postdoctoral fellowships that we treat as sort of student positions 
are those that um, are from postdoctoral fellows who hold scholarships for that purpose. So on our funding page, you can have a look at those. And um, for the most part, if you're looking for a postdoc position, have a look at HR and at the job postings on Career Beacon. So HR is human resources. Oh, good so point. yeah, so postdocs are treated as jobs rather than as student positions. Yeah, so Career Beacon is um, a uh, website that posts the jobs at Dalhousie. So postdoc um, possibilities would be um, on that website. Um, great. Uh, I see a question here from uh, Lucy Menes asking if all the master's degrees are full time. So um, some degrees give the possibility of studying part time, but in for the purposes of getting a student visa and study permit, um, you would have to be studying full time. Um, so uh, let's see, there was a question asking if there is a master's degree in data science. That was from Arande Guzman. There isn't a specific data science degree, but within the computer science degree, there's an option to add a certificate in big data analytics. And Dalhousie is also the home of, I want to say it's the big data analysis, but it might be the big data analytics institute. I'd highly recommend you have a look at the institute's webpage. Um, it's a great website. It talks about the research that's being done and also where each of the researchers is housed. Most of them are in computer science, but there are a few in health informatics and also some in engineering. So I'd say if you're looking for a big data degree, look at the Masters of Computer Science. You'll certainly want to do the research-based program. So that's the Masters of Computer Science, not the Masters of Applied Science. And you'll want to add on the certificate on big data. Yeah, you could say that big data is very big at Dalhousie Ooh. these days. Um, great. Now there's a question here from uh, Victoria Enrique Suarez uh, about the entrance GPA. Is it from the last two years of undergrad? And the answer is? It depends. Um, if you're going into your master's, yes, we're looking at the last two years of your undergraduate degree. If you're going into a doctorate, a PhD program, we're looking at the last year of your undergraduate degree. And then, depending on how your master's degree was structured, we'll normally take your entire master's degree. But if you did a very course heavy master's where the courses were backloaded, which is very unusual, we'll just take the last year of your master's. But in 99.9% .9 of the cases, People will be doing their thesis in the final year of their master's, or it might be a one-year master's, so we'll take your entire master's degree in the last year of your bachelor's. Okay. Um, a question around whether there's a master's in administration for architecture. Um, and that's from Guillermo Valdez Romero. Um, so Dalhousie doesn't have a specific program in administration for architects. Um, within the business programs, the programs in business administration at the master's level, there could be a possibility of um, focusing in your work um, placement uh, in the architecture field, but there's no program specifically um, for architects in that way. One other option is the master's of science in business administration because it is a research-based program. Of course, you have the option to do your research on administration for architecture. But yes, as Jennifer said, no specific program. Okay, Sammy Lieberman has asked, if I got my MBA in the USA, do I have to show English language proficiency? You do not. You have a, a granted degree taught in the medium of English, I assume taught in English from a country where one of the national languages is English, so you are all set. Okay, um, Juan Carlos Martinez has asked, if you can do, um, is there a course you can take with your master's if you don't meet the English requirement. Now for all of the graduate programs, um, you do have to finish um, the um, English course before you can start as a full-time student in, uh, in those programs. Um, let's see, question here um, from Daphne Solis, how long should I wait for a supervisor answer? 
That's a tough one right now is final exams here at Dalhousie. So I would say whatever amount of time you are thinking, add a week to that. Um, it can be really tricky. I did my master's at Dalhousie as well. And I remember it wasn't even that long. I think she got back to me in about four days, but those felt like the longest four days of my life. Um, unfortunately, it really depends on the individual and on what time of term it is. So I'd say since we're in the final exams right now, it's going to be at least a week, maybe two weeks. And the first week of any term, just don't write to them. Wait until at least the second week of term. Um, if you don't hear back, it's not rude to try calling or sending a follow-up email. But probably two weeks is the right time to give up hoping on the first email one. Okay, so uh, questions here from uh, Juliana Sobralda Barros and Vanessa Suarez about PhD in genetics and PhD in plant biology. Great, so uh, for plant biology, it would be a PhD in agriculture. Um, they have a plant science faculty within the Faculty of Agriculture, which would, I think, be exactly what you're looking for. Um, have a look at the faculty um, page, see what kind of research they're doing. I'm unfortunately not coming from a science background, but I have been to the agricultural campus and touring their greenhouses and labs is amazing as a layman. Um, but yes, have a look at their faculty page. I think that the plant science department within the Faculty of Agriculture is where you're looking. Uh, for genetics, is there any additional information? I guess it's PhD in genetics. Okay, so if you're looking for plant genetics, the same place, agriculture, plant science. If you're looking for animal genetics, you have a few, there's a few more possibilities. Um, within agriculture, there's also an animal science department. Of course, there's also a biology department. And if you're looking at um, human genetics, then you'd be looking in medicine. There's a few places. You could look at the PhD in health. You could look at microbiology and immunology. And I think those would be my top choices, unless you happen to already be a medical doctor, in which case I'd suggest looking at the medical research PhD. Okay, so we have a couple questions here from Daniel Martinez Calderon about the interdisciplinary PhD. So first, our fall semester uh, begins in September. So usually in um, the first full week of September. Um, the deadline to apply to start in the fall then is? Is January 1st. Okay. It's coming. Um, so you can still apply, you can <laughs> to, still to, apply to start in September 2019. And if you find a supervisor and get their and the department's permission, late admissions might be considered. But especially if you're looking for any Dalhousie scholarships, um, for the Harmonized Scholarships, the deadlines are coming up. So please go to our website right now. Yeah. Um, the TOEFL test uh, score required for the interdisciplinary PhD is at 100 on the TOEFL IBT. Um, and uh, a question about the minimal ex uh, minimum acceptable GPA for the interdisciplinary PhD is 3.7. Um, and to know the equivalent of your score from a different system, should what if should Danielle like do? To email me, um, or if you can tell me which. No, actually, just email me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me your GPA on a public chat. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, and same thing for uh, Jeanette Fracchia. Um, has some really great questions um, about the ELAP scholarships. That's something we haven't talked about, but the ELAP, E L A P. Emerging Leaders in the Americas program offers a lot of really interesting um, short-term research possibilities for undergraduates and graduates. Um, so we suggest you check that out if you'd like to come to Dalhousie, not necessarily as a student, but to do research. So Jeanette, someone um, uh, will will follow up with you with your questions um, about ELAP. But it's true um, that the next um, call for ELAP will probably be in the spring. Oh, and Mike, I, since you brought up ELAP, let's mention MITAX as well. 
that's another option if you want to do a research stay at Dalhousie, um, especially if you're currently in your undergrad. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so there's there's um there's also a program um, for short-term research called MITAX, M-I-T-A-C-S, um, which provides the opportunity for um, you to come from certain countries, not every country, um, but to come and uh, do short-term research uh, here at Dalhousie, and, and, and in fact, at, at any university in Canada. Um, let's see, uh, we have a question from uh, John Salon about um, English. Um, so, uh, as we said there, you have to um, finish the English course before you start the master's program. Um, question from Daniel uh, Martinez Calderon, where can I get an official transcript of my documents and which documents are referring? Um, so if you, you can go back, you'll be able to download this um, presentation and you can see um, all the details about documents. Um, and as long as you have a certified translation, it doesn't, we don't have a specific list that you have to use, um, but it has to be a certified uh, uh, translation. Okay, so um, if you, um, let's, maybe we'll wrap it up in a minute. If there's any last questions, um, Danielle Martinez Calderon, um, about documents, how about we can follow up with you um, to answer your questions about um, specifically the documents, um, post and post-secondary institutions and that type of thing. So we can help you um, get the information that you need. All right, any last questions? Um, if you come up with a question, here you have um, our email addresses um, where you can reach us directly. Um, we have your info, um, and so uh, we'll follow up with some of you. And of course, Caldo um, has um, their services um, of referral um, and uh, of information as well. So thank you so much, uh, Jennifer and Jasmine. Um, it was it was very very clear the, the the presentation, and I believe that most of the people get uh, get to have their 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 questions answered throughout this this presentation. Um, for for all of you that have participated, so you will receive um, an email from from Caldo with the link for the video of this presentation alongside with other information. Um, Jennifer and Jasmine's contact information is in the slide that you are currently seeing, so obviously um, that's a great way to contact them for, for any specific topic related to the presentation and to Dalhousie University in general. And uh, for those of you that are interested on Thursday, we will have uh, the University of Waterloo doing the presentation, so if you are interested, just register and make sure to be online at the same time as, as today. So thank you so much, Jasmine and Jennifer, for your time. And from my end, also, thank you to everyone that took the time to participate in today's webinar. All right, thank you, everyone.